This is hot, Ray. Symmetrical book stacking. Just like the Philadelphia Mass Turbulence of 1947. You're right. No human being would stack books like this. Listen. You smell something? Live from Joe's mom's basement, or somewhere, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and if you've got 20 minutes, you're going to have a better financial life next year. Why? Because today, to help you with 20-minute tasks to improve your finances this year, we welcome the hilarious hosts of Two Bulls in a China Shop, Kyle Hedman and Dan Leeson. We also welcome our writer, who's kind of like the bull and the china shop of her own financial life, Paulette Verhatch. Then we welcome the man who takes 20 minutes to make his coffee because, you know, he's retired now. From LenPenzo.com, it's Mr. Raging Bull himself, Robert De Niro. I'm just kidding, it's only Len Penzo. They'll all be going head-to-head in my trivia. And now, a guy who's like the china shopkeeper ready to help you sweep away any financial messes, it's Joe Saul Sihai. Hey there, stackers. Let me be the first one to welcome you to Friday. I am Joe Saul Sihai, Average Joe Money on Twitter. And Doug, nice open. Happy Friday to you, my friend. Pretty glad to be here. It is it is an exciting day because we got some great guests and we're going to introduce them to you in just a moment. But before that, let's go deep under Los Angeles. We're hiding out in his bunker. I believe we've got him, Mr. Len Penzo on my shortwave radio. How are you, man? I am fantastic. It's October, right? And uh, it's uh, one of my favorite time of year. Baseball season. Is it, so the Dodgers uh, going all the way this year? Uh, I'm not going... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going out on a limb and I'm not going to jinx them because you know what? I thought they were going to go all the way for four of the last five years. And I think they've made it once. So we'll see. But you know what? This is the year, Len. And by the way, uh, we were talking about best hot dogs. I think the Dodger dog might be one of the best hot dogs I've had at a stadium. That's a damn good hot dog. I agree with you. Yeah, it's good. You know, I've been to a lot of stadiums too. And and uh, I think it's right up there. It, it, that extra long wiener is uh, can't be beat. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Cannot, cannot be Wait, did beat. I hear a snicker there? Did somebody who that? What, who snickered? <laughs> I just, I, I don't. Why would we snicker about that? Yes, and the woman who creates a lot of the snickers on this show, it's uh, Paula Perhatch. How are you? I'm doing great. I got my Doug 2020 shirt on. Got my God swag finally. I know. We were just talking about this, Paulette. We gotta, we gotta. It, it's about time to start the campaign, isn't it? Like 2024. Neighbor Doug, 2024. What did we sell? Like six of those shirts last time, Joe? Yeah, I think we can get eight this year. I think we'll get eight. It's probably because yes. it says, I dig Doug on the back. I saw that. I was like, mm. You got long hair to cover it's like, it. Uh, I'm going to change that. Maybe not. Well, Paula, you think it's time for us to uh, meet our, our guests? Because normally we have one guest. This year we got two for the price of one. How are we going to do that during the trivia? Because I don't know if that is fair, but we'll see. Oh, they get to play as one brain. And if you've listened to their mm. show... They, they, I'm not sure they we're getting that. They play off each other show. incredibly well. I'm a suspect. What's that? The one brain between the two of us. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> On a good day. On a good day. It's it's Kyle and Dan. <laughs> Kyle and Dan from the Two Bulls at a China Shop podcast. How are you guys? Uh, doing great. Fantastic. Doing great. Thanks for inviting us on here. And please, please tell your mom thanks for letting us uh, stay in the guest room. Absolutely. No. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> fantastic having you. Glad that because you're here, we don't get Len's lasagna, which Len makes a phenomenal <laughs> lasagna, but we do get mom's uh, minestrone soup, which is great. So uh, just so everybody knows, knows the voices. Kyle, we'll go to you first. Uh, so how did you and Dan decide to start the Two Bulls podcast? Kind of just started um, after Dan sent me a book. It was Nicholas Darvis's How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market. Uh, that was right before COVID hit. And so we were spending probably hours every day on the phone talking about stocks that we liked, uh, the new things that we were learning, just going down this really fun rabbit hole of learning everything we could about investing and active trading. And from there, it just kind of turned into maybe we should just record this and kind of document it as a cautionary tale for everybody else who wants to follow along. (laughs) (laughs) So, Dan, how long have you been regretting deciding to turn it into a podcast? 
Oh, uh, you know, maybe after the first month when I realized how much editing I was in for and, and how much extra work <laughs> recording a podcast was compared to just a phone call. It is so much more, isn't it? Yeah. It is so oh, much yeah. more. Like, you'd never believe how much goes on behind the scenes. But you guys have all kinds of great guests. Talk a little bit, Dan, about the show and what you guys do. Yeah, well, like Kyle said, we, we started out just trying to document our journey. But as the show grew, we started to get guests from like healthcare, small cap healthcare CEOs to financial advisors and investment planners, just like this wide spectrum of people showing up and talking to, to us. Uh, so it began to to kind of blossom into all things finance. And Kyle and I got this in, inside track into talking with people that without the show, any it, I would never have the opportunity to talk to these people. Like, I'm still amazed. Like, wait, this person wants to come talk to us? Like, seriously, I'm just some guy in a house somewhere with a microphone. Like, what? what how did this happen? We're saying that 10 years later, Dan. We're saying that <laughs> yeah. 10 years in. They want to talk to who? Yeah, about right, what? Right. Well, I'm so glad you guys are here with us. We got Dan here. We got Kyle here. We got Len. We got Paulette. We got mom's neighbor, Doug. Let's get this party started. Our piece today that we're going to riff on comes to us from our friend Jessie Fearon, who was on the show recently talking about her new book. She's got a fantastic book about money, and she has a great piece called Five 20-Minute Tasks to Improve Your Finances. And I, and I really got excited when I read this, uh, Paulette, because you and I talk a lot openly about our ADD. And when I see things like 20-Minute Tasks, like it gets rid of a lot of the fear that I have of going down a rabbit hole when I read, oh, I could get my act together in a hurry here. Yeah, I totally love this. I set timers all the time because like just last night, my car from driving down, moving from Seattle to Gainesville, I had not fully cleaned my car out from that 10 day journey because it's been 90 degrees outside. And so last night it just became unbearable. And I literally set a timer for 20 minutes. It's funny though, it was the same number. And I pretty much cleaned it out in 20 minutes. I think when things overwhelm you, you feel like you don't know if you can do it, but you know you can work on it for a specific amount of time. Like you know you can do 20 minutes and then that there is a task that you can pretty much check off the list in that time. I think it gives you that little like for people with ADHD, it's like that hit of dopamine, right? It's got to be fun. It's got to like have some little spark about it. And so I really, really um, liked that aspect, something that was very concrete that and yeah, we all know we have 20 minutes that we yeah. probably are scrolling on Instagram. Well, and that's the thing, Dan. I mean, ADD or no ADD, is, isn't getting started just really the hardest part? Oh, yes, sir, certainly. It, it takes so much extra energy just to begin the task. People without ADD don't understand. Like, it's like, well, how, well it's right there in front of you. Just start it. It's like, I'm trying. I really am. <laughs> But next to it is a butterfly. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but even if you don't have ADD, like just getting that, you know, the hardest part of working out OG on our show says all the time is putting your shoes on, right? And actually going out mm -hmm. to, to start working out. And once you start the workout, you're like, oh, this isn't half as hard as I thought it was. Yes, certainly. When, once, it, once you dive in and that focus kicks in, uh, you get to the end of the task. No, no problem. I, f I found in my experience anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Let's dive into this list. We're going to start here where the list starts at number one, Len, uh, she starts with this idea, set up sinking funds. There's a number of people out there that are like, okay, what the hell's a sinking fund? So Len, you want to be our explainer guy? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, it's basically funds that you allocate, picture them as envelopes. If you're using a cash method of, of trying to set things aside for for various uh, payments or what have you. This is, uh, these are funds that you keep in reserve for things that you want to do in the future. More fun things like she lists uh, Christmas sinking funds, something for your vacations, things if you have kids and, you know, that have their sporting events, which we know can be very expensive. You know, you'd have separate funds for that. So um, that's one, one way to do it. You set up all these different accounts. Now, when I'm, when I was reading this, I was like, I'm not a big fan of sinking funds, if, if I can be so bold to say that. I, oh. I don't see why you can't just use a spreadsheet and keep track of it that way. Have a, you know, minimize your accounts, minimize your different funds and just put it on, on a spreadsheet. That way you don't have so many different funds out there and you can keep track of all this stuff on a spreadsheet. Just to me, it seems much more simpler. Same idea. You got to create the friction. <laughs> but why do we call it a sinking fund? I think that's such a negative sounding word, sinking. It totally is. 
Because you sink money into it? Is that why it's... I think that's why they do. Yeah, I think I think so. Who wants to be like, wee, I'm sinking. Like, no, that sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, I, I Someone that needs was to come up with a different was... <laughs> name for a fund like this. Like, oh, I'm sinking and I need a life preserver. Yeah, you know, it, well, it, it, it could be, I mean, we could come up for a new name for it right now, like the uplifting fund then, Paula. It could be the uplifting fund or the, the, the damn it, I made it fund. Or like you said, the FU fund. I like Len's idea and call it would just rename it the kitchen sink fund. And then you get one account and then you put them all into there. Mm-hmm. All your kitchen sink funds. Thank you, Kyle. You know what, Joe, we should have Kyle and Dan on much, a lot more often. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Are we not supposed to agree with Len? Hang on. I don't know the rules here. <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm not used to that. I'm not used to that here, Kyle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's on a fixed income now, boys. He can't pay you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to do to get Len's attention. Just say, I agree with you, Len. And he's like, that is the nicest person I've ever met. I don't hear that very often. Yeah. That Kyle guy is so great. Yeah. But Kyle, so you seriously don't like the idea of having these separate buckets. I don't like having my money spread out into multiple different places. It just makes it too easy to lose track of everything. But then how do you, let's say that you're saving for a goal and and you take out too much money for goal A. I mean, then that leaves less money for goal B. Like I often find when people would keep money in one spot that they would, they go, well, you know what? This is the money that I'm using today and it's just a little bit extra. And then the goals that are further down the line, because it's not separated, that money, you know, I end up, uh, I end up borrowing from that much more often. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I guess it all just depends on personality then, right? For me, I know that having multiple accounts doesn't really help me, but I'm also very, very good at not overspending. So that's a scenario that works for me, may not work for everybody. When it comes to like putting away for big projects a lot, or big purchases, a lot of times I don't even actually go make the big purchase. I decide I like the money more and would rather go throw it into the markets. Yeah, it actually gives <laughs> Kyle physical pain to spend money. Yes. I've witnessed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially at the bar, right? When you have to get yeah. the yeah. When- Tell me of your ways. <laughs> <laughs> I convinced Vicky Robin to buy a hot tub. That's like my favorite. That's how my spending powers work. <laughs> Did you strong really? The forces in me. Yes. How about that? Your money or your life? And you told her that a hot tub is well worth the 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 <laughs> yeah. The we money call it the Paula in- Perhaps Memorial Hot Tub, and she loves it. <laughs> How did the pitch go? Fantastic. What did you convince her not to spend on? Yeah. Yeah. Convince Kyle to buy a hot tub right now. Kyle, buy a hot tub. (laughs) Text Vicky Robin. She'll tell you. She'll tell you. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. So you have a hot tub and now you won't spend money fixing it. Right. It came at the house. I mean, I never even opened it. (laughs) (laughs) And how long have you lived in that house? Uh, five years now, I think. Yeah. I know Kyle's like, uh, why is it getting hot in here? Uh, somebody changed the subject. Right. Dan, <laughs> Dan. I can hear my wife knocking at the door. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fix the hot tub. Are we fixing the hot tub? <laughs> <laughs> Dan, are you like Kyle and Len? Am I like Kyle and Len? No, I'm like what you're saying. If I had everything in one account, it's gone the moment I want. I don't even need the money for something. The moment I want something, I'm like, do I have it in my savings? I do. It's mine. Bye, bye, bye. (laughs) Dan's my buddy. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I see how we formed like two teams here. You you see the teams we formed, Doug? (laughs) Pick a side, Doug. Well, we'll have someone's basement to live in when we want to retire and can't afford to. It'd be great. That's right. Uh, so this idea of bucketing, though, people do that, Kyle, with their investments, right? Mm-hmm. Where they'll say, I've got this short-term bucket, mid-term bucket, long-term bucket. Do you think of your investments in terms of these buckets? Uh, yeah, I'm actually the complete opposite when it comes to my investment accounts. I've got like four or five different ones strewn out all over the place. <laughs> but I want to forget about those. Those are ones I don't want to look at until it's time to actually you know, start pulling from them. That's interesting. Len, are you the same? Uh, Are you the opposite like Kyle is when it comes to your investments? Well, my investment buckets, I put both feet in and they're filled with concrete. And then I (laughs) tend to jump off a bridge. That's how my investment buckets have been working the last uh, year. (laughs) Not not that fantastic, huh? Maybe you'll find some sunken treasure. Uh, Kyle, I'll be in touch. Is Jimmy Hoffa your investment advisor? <laughs> yeah, sure seems that way. <laughs> Paulette, I got to imagine that that you prefer buckets. Yeah, I'm I do wine ab, but like literally just yesterday, this is a bad day to be talking cuz yesterday I had a little bit of a shopping spree that was unplanned. Um so actually Brooke, who writes our 201 is also my 
budgeting coach and she just suggested we do like separate actual separate accounts just for like my so we know things are that I need handled are handled. Yeah, I'm I mean, I'm so ADHD. It's so bad. And I just uh, yeah, I'm such a spender. It's a constant. It's a constant thing. I kind of meet you guys halfway, Kyle and Len. I use one account. I use an ally account, but they have buckets inside the same account mm. so that I can I can bucket off stuff, but I don't have to have 16 different accounts open, which mm. is nice. But I can go in there and I can label it, you know, this is our vacation fund. Like she said, this is our holiday fund. This is so I know that I got money available for these things uh, when they come and it's all in one account instead of multiple accounts. And Ally, if you want to sponsor the show, it's Joe at StackyBenjamins.com. <laughs> Does it stop you from taking too much out for like a set purchase that you've had earmarked? Like say you had $1,000 for a, a trip somewhere and you end up spending 1200 Does it Does it keep you from doing that or does it still let you pull that out? No, I would literally have to open up the other bucket inside mm-hmm. the account and take from the other bucket. So I know I get this little delay, which is nice, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That I have this mm-hmm. little tiny delay between uh, opening the bucket and actually being able to get the money. The second thing that they list on here that Jesse lists is to review your 401k contributions. And Paulette, let's start with you. How often do you do you look at your investment accounts? They say that twice a year, three times a year, four times a year? Yeah, I mean... I do Betterment and I send a hundred bucks a week and it just goes off. And I think that's part of the problem with people who have ADHD is like good investing and good money management is very boring and we don't do boring, you know? So, but I do have that very boring uh, payment just going off once a week and also doing like 200 on my credit cards a week. And so once that's done, hoping to put it all into Betterment, but yeah, I I look at it and they email me about allocation changes and I'm hoping to get like an actual human person to uh, keep track of my finances and help me understand better my investments. Why is that? Just to have somebody to talk to about it? Yeah. I I just find there's this thing called body doubling with ADHD where it's like someone's sitting with you as you do it. And that really helps. That's why I have like a personal trainer I use online and just the things that are really important. I like to get someone to help and to make sure that I'm handling it. That's funny. My uh, bookkeeper for the business said, here's what we're going to do from here on out. We're going to schedule an hour instead of half an hour a month, and we're going to take an hour, and we're just going to do the books during that hour together, mm-hmm. which is fabulous. It's fantastic. Then I know it's it's done. Don't got to worry about getting lost with, uh, Dan talked about butterflies. Don't got to get lost you know, with something else that comes up. Kyle, when it comes to investing, you talked earlier about doing active investing. So if you're doing active investing, you're clearly not looking at this once a once a quarter or once every six months uh well i mean there's there's obviously you got your active investing fund or the amount that you have set aside to that and that's not everything that i have put away obviously because that would just be stupid (laughs) at least until i can prove that i can do this you know gotcha so most your stuff is passive then most of your investment portfolio is passive okay 100%. Yes. And I think even even people who are good at active investing, ultimately, they end up turning into passive investors. So it's definitely something that uh, worth learning about and pursuing and no matter which end of the market you're trying to pull money out of. But the active piece, how often do you look at that? I mean, are you day trading with the active piece? Are you looking at once a week? Oh, yeah. Actively. I'll do swing trades, which range from, you know, like a couple of weeks to a month. Um, I'll do day trading on the futures, which are minutes of trade where you're looking for a setup and you, know, you hit the buy button, you're out in like five minutes. Yeah. And then when it comes to like the passive investing stuff, those are things that are just companies that I like that I think are going to be around for the next, you know, 15 years that are in an industry that's going to grow. And that's where I'm parking my money. And I don't I don't really care. I'm just buying whenever it's whenever I have money for it. Buy more, buy more, buy more. Mm-hmm. Dan, how about you? Sounds like Kyle's got a sandbox account with that he's actively trading and then a long-term account. Are you the, the same? Uh, I do the exact same, only I'm right now I've been doing options instead of futures uh, just because the monthly cost oh, wow. is, is cheaper. You crazy, Dan. I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, absolute insanity. That's scary. And, and I do, do the exact same thing. I've got just four companies that I've picked in industries that I'd like. I feel like these are growth industries. They're going to be bigger right now. It's a fire sale uh, doing dollar cost averaging. It's just like when I in regular intervals, when I get money, I buy more, no matter what the price is at. I like to call it dragon style. I'm a dragon hoarding gold. I don't care what the gold is worth in the town. Give me more. If the answer is, do you want more? It's yes. Give me more shares. Give me more shares. <laughs> uh, I like space. 
uh, electric vehicles, marijuana, fintech. You know, I, I like those industries. I'm like, those are all going to be bigger in 10 years. So just, yeah, give me more of those. Give me more of those. So if you found like an astronaut who is high in space, that'd be the perfect investment. Oh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have their poster on my wall for sure, for sure. I'm like, they're doing it right. Could you imagine being high in zero gravity? Blow your mind. That's true. Oh, yeah, definitely. I can see the dude floating by the camera. Dude. Right. You ever gone to space on weed? <laughs> if, if you're going to be trading options, do not be smoking weed. Day trading options, don't do it. Kids, you heard it here first. That's the most important thing. Most, yeah, yeah. most important thing people are going to hear today, Doug. I was just going to say that the roach clip commodity market in space would skyrocket because you got to hold on to those things. You cannot lose those things. They're just going to be floating around in the cabin. You got to hold on to your jerns. Len, you're the engineer in the room. Uh, we, can you imagine people engineering for, uh, I don't even know how we got on this weed and space Smoke thing. Smoke open space. Maybe, space toking. Space maybe, toking. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should ask you the real question, Len, which is, as a guy who just recently retired now, are, are, does that shift how often you look at your investments and review your contributions? Yeah. You know what I was going to say was I was totally passive, honest to goodness, up until about a year ago. I, I've told you the story about one particular stock, which I watched, I had $10,000 in and it doubled. And now it's since then, it's it, it's worth half of my original investment. So, wow. and since then, I'm very actively <laughs> managing my individual stocks that I've picked now. You know, I was all brave and said it and forget it. And uh, I can't do that anymore. So yes, I'm very active. Last up here on her list of things to do is to set up your emergency fund. And Paulette, let's start with you. You said you put money aside for betterment. Do you set money aside as an emergency fund as well? Yeah, I haven't been doing that like as I've been just like having one and letting it, you know, sit basically and doing everything else in investments. But I think putting aside a little bit, I think that's kind of like the, your first step before investing. I don't know if you would agree, but kind of just something that you know is is right there and liquid and you can you can get it as soon as you need it i think is really important and I, you know you can always put more in it for sure but after you know the amount that you know you might need this immediately i think that there's everything else could go on investing for me if as long as it's a low risk you know something like an index fund yeah dan how about with you do you keep an emergency fund or everything go into the options market oh yeah no no uh, emergency would destroy me yeah and no fund <laughs> 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 Dan's emergency fund is uh, December 2022, like, uh, you know, Tesla puts or so, oh, I don't know. No, I got a mask and a toy gun. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Still no. in the box. <laughs> no. I was going to say, you options traders need an emergency fund just for your option trading, just mm -hmm. in case something doesn't right uh, happen the way you're expecting. You know, that was the hardest thing to get to is good risk management, where if I hit a certain loss in the, in the day, I just walk away. They, it was hard to get to that yeah. point, uh, but it's so crucial because, yeah, you'll just run out of money so fast, so fast. Very fast. Yeah. Kyle, how about you? Emergency fund, money on the side? Oh, yes. Yes. I'm a huge believer in having, you know, prepared for emergencies. Uh, I, I've seen too many. I've lived in too many households, I would say, that could be wrecked by one bad uh, <laughs> life-changing event or even just like an AC unit going out. Mm -hmm. Like would have been really rough growing up as a kid. And I've vowed to never have to put myself in that position again. True story, by the way. Kyle's emergency fund says hot tub repair fund on the top. <laughs> Yeah, we've just been putting $100 in that every week for the last five years. <laughs> That's it. Just keep putting money in there. Someday it'll fix itself. Yeah. Len, how about you? Do you get esoteric with your emergency fund or is it pretty straightforward? Was that the word for the day, esoteric? That's, yes. Uh, that, that's, that, that's, you have officially filled in for Paula today. Very good, esoteric. Yeah, no, I do, you know, when I was employed at the time, my emergency fund actually varied based on uh, how secure I felt with my job, you know, because, uh, you know, it's something could be very cyclical. So there were times when my emergency fund was as, as much as a, about a year's worth of expenses. 
but I think over time, overall, it averaged about six months. Um, and no, it was nothing, nothing fancy. I know a lot of people said, Hey, just let your investments be your emergency fund or let, you know, as long as you got your credit, you got your credit card limit, use that as your emergency fund. But, uh, no, I always just kept cash in a, in a separate savings account as an emergency fund. Coming up next, uh, we've got two more on Jesse's list of five very quick things you can do to improve your finances. We talked about having different buckets for your money. We talked about reviewing your investments, setting up an emergency fund, two to go. And then we're going to ask our panelists for theirs that maybe didn't make Jesse's list. But before that, we have a year-long trivia competition that's happening. And man, this thing's been getting tight. It's for the world's worst trophy this dollar store trophy that they're fighting over. And by the way, good news. Remember Len, do you remember there was that guy who said that he was going to have a cake for the winner? And then he kind of, he kind of disappeared after we told everybody that this guy said he was going to make a cake for the winner. Yeah. So is, is he back? No, my friend, Eric <laughs> in Detroit, my friend, Eric in Detroit said, I want to donate the cake. And he actually sent me a gift certificate to buy a cake. So the winner is going to get cake, uh, which by the way, Dan and Kyle, I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with you. So oh. unless, unless you're able to part, you know, partake in whatever the, whoever the winner is, maybe take a little piece of their cake, but you saying we can't have your cake or eat it. <laughs> Kyle's like, we're out of here at the midway point. This is even dumber than I thought. I, I hope it's not going to be a Mac and cheese cake. Is it going to be a mac and cheese? Oh cake? God, I hope because not. That's... No, please, no, please. <laughs> but maybe Paulette, if you win, you, you make half of it mac and cheese for Paula, and then you take the non. I don't know. I don't know how that would work. But it's this competition's between our three contributors, Paulette, Len, and uh, Kyle and Dan. You guys are together going to be OG, which means there's some good news and bad news. Kyle, yeah. you want the good news or the bad news? Does that mean we're in last place? No, actually, the bad news is you have to go first because you're in first place. So Ooh, you yes. guys tied Paula one week. Uh, so you have 13 and a half points. Len has 12 and Paulette has been on the show now two weeks and she's won both times to narrow her and score. Fuego. Oh. Chicken butt narrows her score to nine and a half. So it is tightening as we enter the fourth quarter here. But Doug. You've got the trivia today, my friend. What are we talking about? Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. Turns out today isn't just Friday. Amazing. It's also National LED Light Day. Well, let's illuminate this holiday, shall we? LED is short for light emitting diodes, which LED bulbs use to produce light. So let's do this. I'm going to tell you the name of the inventor of the LED. That's Nick Holignac Jr. And I'll also tell you the name of the company he was working for when he created it, General Electric. Duh. What I won't tell you is this. What year was the LED invented? I'll be back with the answer right after I go unscrew the light in the oven to save me 43 cents a year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm remember, writing that one down. Remember that callback, Mr. Penzo? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There goes my sixth one for Jesse's list. <laughs> Crap. This was for people that have been around the show for a while. Uh, past contributor Greg McFarlane used to rip on this blogger, this popular blogger who, who talked about... Um, no names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He would he would talk about unscrewing the light in the oven, and uh, Greg would go on these rants about how you unscrew. It takes you so much time, you lose forty three cents in the as you're saving the money. Oh All right, uh, Dan and Kyle, you guys, you're kicking this thing off. LED. What year was it invented? Oh man, can can we have a sidebar? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. Kyle, I think it was a while ago. Yeah. I think, I think like many, many, like decades. Are we trying to help uh, the person we're filling in for, or are we trying to let somebody else win? Oh, right. Are we wow. trying to look smart yeah. or get back on Ooh. the show by making them look smart? Yeah. Oh, man, that's a tough yeah, that's one. Good, good questions. Good questions. Um, but what about the answer? Do you have a clue? I want to say it was like the 50s. I think it's newer than that, but I was leaning more towards like 70s or 80s. Oh. Wow. 
Just because it wasn't used. I mean, ah, the technology has been around, I'm sure, for a while. But whether or not it was actually used or mass produced, I think, is the, the real question. Wow, Joe, this is a real brain trust you brought on the show. <laughs> I was well, we want to okay. do well. We right. don't wanna, nobody wants to come on the show and look foolish. <laughs> That's not what we're doing here. I, I, I feel like a curveball like 1956 is a safe, solid I answer. I think you're insane, but why not? Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, 1972. That's what you said when we started the show. 1972. <laughs> right. Well, sometimes it's like, like the internet was, wasn't was around, you know, none of us experienced it, or a few of us did before the 90s, but really it was invented in the 60s. Right. So you never exactly. know when it's exactly. when something was actually invented Thank you, Paul and Adams. when it became popular. So Dan and Kyle, what is your final answer? 56 or 73 or whatever? Somebody said, "Do it, Kyle. You do it. I trust you." I want to go seventies. Let's say, right. uh, let's say seventy-five. Just go right in the middle. But if it's the fifties, you better fix that hot tub because I'm coming over. This <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is good. I want that hot tub fixed. You guys are gonna be texting me. I'm like, you're so right, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> seventy, seventy. What, what? What, Kyle? Was the answer seventy? We'll just say seventy-five. Right in the middle of the seventies. Seventy-five. All right, Mr. Penzo. They took nineteen seventy-five. What are you thinking? I should know this because I'm an electrical engineer, but I, I really don't know. Hey, I'm an electrician too. Well, and you said <laughs> you said 75. For some reason, I think the 50s is a little early for that. I so I'm gonna I'm just gonna pick. Uh, I got to be careful here because Paulette's gonna just pick one side or the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I will say Chelsea Brenner, your ass. 62. 62. Well, Paulette, you got 75 and 62. What are you going to do with that? I'm going to go 1976. Stupid Price is Right rules. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, 75. Strategery. Strategery. So you think it was later, though. Uh, uh, What was the first year that came to your mind, Paulette? I don't know. First thing came to mind was, thank God I'm going last. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. All right, the votes. Uh, you are... guys are electrical engineers, though. I'm a writer, so I don't feel bad. But it's all some people on this call, maybe. It's should. all locked in. Paulette, can she keep her string alive? We'll find out. Dan and Kyle, you guys kicked it off by going 1975. Dan, uh, how angry are you if the answer really is like 56 or 57? Oh no. Oh, I don't think I'll feel anger because I'll get to tell Kyle I told you so. Oh <laughs> man, that's even worse. <laughs> So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in a pretty sweet spot. I can't lose. <laughs> Even if you lose, you win. Len, you took earlier the 60s. You're shaking your head no. You don't think so. I'm embarrassed that I don't even, I don't know the answer. I really don't know the answer to this. So I, I don't know. And Paulette, you freely admit you don't know the answer. You're not embarrassed. You're like, hey, I'm a writer. I'm not embarrassed. I hate those things. I hate LED lights. The uh, Well, let's, 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 uh, <laughs> Uh, gee, if you want to sponsor the show, do not hold that against me, please. Uh, it's Paulette at pauletteperhatch.com. Uh, Doug, yeah. you've got the answer to this thing. Who's going to take home the prize today? Hey there, stackers. I'm scented candle lover and bringer of light in the form of trivia, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, the widespread installation of LEDs can save 348 trillion watts of energy by the year 2027. That's enough energy to power 44 large electric power plants, saving more than $30 billion. But you go on, keep hating on them, Paulette. Today, though, we're asking when this little miracle was created. And the answer? Well, while Dan and Kyle and Paulette all thought it was sometime in the smooth 70s and Len was in the early sock hop 60s, Turns out the year is actually 1963, which means Len is our winner. (laughs) Whoops, I I hit the wrong one. (laughs) No, that's not the one. (laughs) I'm trying to find our... Oh, there it is. Third, third try. Yes. Congratulations, Len. Nice work. That's funny, because, you know, last week I was certain I won and I lost, and this time I'm clueless and I won. So, and Len pulls to within half a point of OG. So Sorry, OG. next week, <laughs> game, <laughs> game, game on. We won't be back. 
<laughs> that was our shot, Dan. We took it. We missed it. There it was. But Dan, you're feeling good either way. Like you said, it was Kyle's fault. So you're you're off the hook. Well, I don't know. I trust me. Kyle will break it down and be like, well, we were both off. We wouldn't have won even if we did your answer. So Price is right rules, though. We should have gone early. Yeah, actually, we don't do Price is Right rules. We got we got oh. some anger. We got some hate mail about Price is Right rules. Yeah, P- yeah. Oh, people are like, why do you do it that way? I'm like, I didn't know. I didn't know I was ruining your life by doing Price is Right rules. Price is yeah. Right's been around for 50 years. <laughs> Somebody wanted to critique the way they it's do things. It's a winning formula. <laughs> it How is. many one star reviews did you get for that, Joe? I didn't get any one star reviews. I just we had a focus group in Orlando and they didn't know that I was in the room. And as the guy's talking to him about it, this one guy's getting really passionate about he's probably listening. His name's Danny. He's probably listening to the show. And he was he was getting very passionate. He's like, they use these stupid price of right rules. I wish they'd stop using this. <laughs> this uh, <laughs> like it was it was it was fantastic. It was a good rant. You're Danny. either right or you're wrong. You're not close enough. Yes, absolutely. The price is wrong. <laughs> There it is, Paulette. Hey, let's get into the second half of the show, shall we? The second half is brought to you by Magnify Money. You know, uh, Kyle, what happens when you go to stackybenjamins.com slash Magnify Money? Uh, no, tell me. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> look at look at Doug. Doug's like, oh, amateur. <laughs> <laughs> you, find, you find out, Kyle, that those brick and mortar banks that you just walk into and ask about savings accounts and checking accounts and CDs, not nearly best in class. There's all kinds of options with online banking, head to stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money. And they rank over 92% of all the savings accounts, checking accounts, CDs head to head there. You'll pay less. You'll ditch the bad stuff. You'll save a bunch of money. Stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money. All right. Time for the second half of this, she talks about subscriptions and Len, you ever look at your subscriptions and go, you know what? I could probably cut out some subscriptions. <laughs> no, no. I, I, you know what? I don't look at subscriptions. That's the honeybee's job as the uh, chief financial officer of our household. Uh, so no, I don't. And does she, I, she does every month actually. So she knows precisely how many subscriptions we have and what we're spending. And frankly, if you ask me how much we're spending, I couldn't tell you. So don't ask me. No idea. Do you know a subscription that she cut recently? Yeah, she cut the one to my own blog. She cut that one out. I know that. <laughs> well, the truth is she's never been reading it anyway, Lynn. I hate to tell you that. Well, that's what she told me. That's why she cut it out. I was on, I was on TV for nine years at Channel 7 WXYZ in Detroit. Cheryl saw me three times in nine years. I was on twice a week, saw me three times <laughs> and twice. It was only because we were going on vacation right after I left the studio and the studio was on the way on vacation. If we hadn't been going on vacation, she would have seen me once, one, one time. Paulette, I was on America's Most Wanted a few times. Did you ever see me on that? <laughs> I <didn't know>. <laughs> <laughs> Was this the outfit you were wearing? <laughs> yeah, That's right. Paulette, uh, subscriptions, you able to save some money by cutting? Yeah, I got a problem. Oh, you got a problem with subscriptions. I had started paying for, I got all depressed about moving from Seattle to Gainesville, which is a much smaller town. I'm like, who is there even going to be to like date there? And there's like on Bumble, you can get, you can upgrade and like order ahead and just like show me who's in Gainesville. And as my friend Sarah described it, uh, she goes by OMG SKR online. She said she finally decided to pay for Tinder and it's really just less rummaging through the trash. And instead it's like, here's all the trash that likes you. (laughs) So it just lays it out for you. And you're like, still total trash. So I did that. I really should cut that out though. Um, And then I also realized that it was coming out of my business account. And I'm like, I better get this. I better get this cleaned up. Well, no, I don't want to, have to explain. Wait that. a minute, Paulette. You, you you just talked about it on the show, so now it's a business expense. Ah, it's a bit, yeah, that's true. Trust me, tax man. We're getting down to business. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Dan, have you cut any subscriptions recently? Yeah, I actually dropped Netflix. I totally did. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm adopting the model of hey, get a Netflix and chill. Right. All I can do is chill now. Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't watching That's the Netflix, good. apparently, so I was like, why am I even <laughs> subscribing? I could still invite somebody over to Netflix and chill. Uh, That's no, how you I, lure them in, Dan. Oh. 
you can get the chill part for free on the internet now. I love the lure. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, come to my lair. Yes. We get creepy here. I started rotating. So right now I've, I'm on Hulu. And when I've watched through all the Hulu shows, mm. I'll switch to, to either Netflix. Maybe I'll do HBO Max, Amazon, like one at a time, binge them all and then move on. So I've only got one going at a time. The old binge and move. Yeah. Also my Tinder move. That's smart. Yeah. I like I that. I think that sounds like some advice we recently got from a really good guest that we just had on recently. Oh, hush. An, an amazing my guest. my idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, guy, that guy who said that was a genius. By the way, he's done nothing with it. Oh. The guy, the guy <laughs> that said that. That was my next question. Yeah. I told the story on your show that my cousin does that and that I heard this like a year ago and I've done nothing with it. But Dan, I love that idea. But to Paulette's point, uh, Hulu and Chill just doesn't have the same the same sound. No, as, I mean the real hack is to have a sister with a real job and her passwords. Uh, Thank uh, you yes. very much. I mean, I don't want to be, I don't want to throw it out that I'm the smartest person on the podcast, but I mean, I am winning at all of these categories. What so I far, do is, so. I always say my place is getting remodeled. Can I go over your place? They usually have oh. all the streaming and over there. They're going to be like, show me your sweet place. Yes. And then you'll be like, oh, no, sorry. Yes. Let's go see your record collection. And for Netflix out there, Perhatch is not Paulette's last name for reals. That's a stage name. So don't, <laughs> yeah, no, don't that's go a stage name. Looking at for <laughs> Paulette's My sister. Velvet Salisbury. <laughs> be like, come over on YouTube and chill. No, that's from the Scrub song. <laughs> Next thing that, uh, that Jesse says is to list out all your debts. And, and so I guess my big question, uh, Kyle... If you got debt at a low interest rate, do you prefer to invest and let the money sit or do you pay off the debt first? Ah, see, it depends on who you are. Like, uh, there's no like one answer when it comes to personal finance, right? There's some people that can, if they see a savings, like if they pay off some debt then they can take that money they were making and they can make smart decisions with it. But there's other people where they would rather just not have the payments hanging overhead and and not have to deal with the mortgage payment. I, I personally like to have all my debts free and clear. I don't carry any credit card debt if I can help it, other than whatever I charge month to month. Uh, the mortgage is about the only thing I do have, and I would love to get rid of that too. But numbers-wise, it makes more sense to leave that in a... If you can get a good loan anymore these days, it's a little different now. Yeah, Running yeah. at 6.5%, but you know, when you're getting 3% on your interest rates on your mortgage, then it makes a lot more sense to carry the mortgage and then keep that money that you have saved by not putting it into the house, into the markets and invest it wisely. Len, how about you? Yeah, I'm with Kyle. I, I don't, I never retired my mortgage. I still have my mortgage. You know, it's, I think it's 490 bucks right now in Southern California. So uh, you can't, you know, why am I going to get rid of that? Why am I going to, why am when I going to you can get in in 1915, Len. <laughs> right. What's that, Paulette? <laughs> Well, when you get in in 1915, the rest of us can't really. Yes. Paulette, what he's saying is he got a mortgage for, let me mansplain what Blend said. He, he, had, he had $450 is what he paid in 1915 for the house. He pays about $8 a month. <laughs> <laughs> Only twenty years. Ago. Hey, you know what? Let me just tell you, my my dad's first back in nineteen. He bought his first house in nineteen sixty three. He told me it was seventeen thousand bucks. His payment was like sixty dollars a month. You know? Oh my so, god! I am almost down to that. If I can keep re well, I can't refinance anymore. And interest rates are going up. But darn it, I was getting close. Yeah, Paulette, are, are you a retire the debt or are you a let it ride and invest? <sighs> I'm a recovering Dave Ramsier, so part of me just says this is what goes first, this is what goes second. But then I just found it kind of depressing. I think it it buoys my spirits to make me feel like I'm putting money in investing, even if I am still paying off credit card debt. And mathematically, that might not make 100% sense. And I totally got out of debt when I was 30, and then I got back in it. I'm like, how? No, God. And it was just stupid reasons. It wasn't like an emergency. No, it, Paris is not an emergency. <laughs> Those croissants, though, they were delicious. Um, Pretty close to an emergency. Yeah. So I think for me right now, I'm paying off debt and investing because I just – I think it's too depressing to me to feel like I'm fully going back to just paying off debt. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing right now. Dan, how about you? Oh, uh, what's a mortgage? 
He's like, <laughs> Dan's like, that's not enough leverage for me. Yeah. yeah. I've got my house for four X bull house. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I just couch hop from friend's place to friend's place. Uh, you know, I don't like to be tied down to one location. Uh, no, he's, he's hiding in Kyle's, uh, a hot tub right now as we're recording. Yeah. This. Yeah. I only come out when he leaves to go shopping. He doesn't know I'm there yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do a spreadsheet with a set amount that's greater than that minimum. So I'm paying down the debt. Uh, I like to do weekly if I can. Instead of like a monthly payment, that's how I manage the debts. Just because th then you get to see it go down more often. Uh, <laughs> so because I, I have this suspicion, like I'm always in my brain, I'm like, they're going to calculate the interest tomorrow. I just know it. They're going to charge me more interest. So like I find if I'm constantly paying it, then the actual interest I'm getting charged is a little less. And it might just all be in my my own head. I, I'm just a pessimist when it comes to it. Uh, but I only have like one credit card that I'll actually be using. All the other debts, like if, if it's a line of credit or something that I had to, to use for it. Remember I, those emergencies that come up that would wreck me? Yeah, like that's where the debt comes from. Aren't you yeah. paying off a Euro trip too? I did go to Ireland in April and I did end up putting uh, some of it on credit. But, you know. It was a, it... Dan, I think you and I need a podcast. <laughs> Travel the world on someone else's money. Yeah. Sinking Benjamins. <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's, they might have something there. All right. Uh, last one. Let's do this one very quickly. Just give us one tip. Uh, Mr. Penzo, we'll start with you. One tip that Jesse didn't go over. By the way, before we get to that, we're going to have a link to Jesse's piece here that I really, I really liked. A lot of five easy, basic things you can do in 20 minutes. Uh, go to our show notes page at stackingbenjamins.com. But Len, what's another one that's a quick task? I wonder if this is in the spirit of it, but this can happen instantly, not less than 20 minutes. And it's open your darn bills when you get them. Don't let them, you know, I know a lot of people, they'll get bills and they don't even open them. They just, you know, they throw them on the counter. Oh, I'll get to them later. And then before you know it, you know, all these bills are piling up. So I don't know it's if that's quite in there, Len. When there's a four digits yeah, well, on your scary. mortgage. Yeah, it, it might not be in the spirit of what Jesse was talking about, but, it, you know, that is important, I think. I think a lot of people get in trouble when they don't open their bills up. I think that is interesting, though, Paulette, what you bring up is that because this was this was tough when I was a financial planner is that people would would go, you know, I'm afraid to look at this stuff. And every time, though, we'd we'd put things out on a spreadsheet so you could see it all in the open. There was this gigantic sigh, and it was usually, okay, this is nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Like this demon in our head is way, way, way bigger than, than what it really is. But what's your tip, Paulette, that's not on the list? I got a good one that, that relates to that is that I have a folder of links that I call my morning money check-in. And every morning is the first thing I do. And if you just do it in a, like a folder on your web browser, you can right click the folder and say open all. So then it is, it's now that I've gotten back into credit card debt. It's both my credit cards. It is my QuickBooks for my business. My, I have a personal like revenue tracker to see like how much money I've or how many sales I've done that week. And then on my YNAB, you need a budget. So all of those open up and I do, you know, I look at my bank accounts. Oh, also my bank's website and just get a little view. And I do it every single day. Cause Len, I'm totally like that where it's like, I don't want to look at this. And then suddenly, you know, it's a week and a half later yeah. and I'm out with friends and I'm like, let me put down my debit card while everyone else is like, like, let me just check here real fast before we go through this checkout line, you know? So that is a discipline that I have really started to do religiously. And that is just very comforting every day that I know exactly what's going on with my money. Takes 10 to 15 minutes every morning. I love that. In my book, I talk about doing it once a week, but it's the frequency. The more frequently you can have this little check-in meeting, the better off you. I think you're going to be because mm -hmm. you always have the heartbeat. Uh, before we have our guests go, Doug, you got one for us? We haven't We haven't called on Doug yet today. Got one that didn't make Jesse's list? Uh-uh. Nope. <laughs> 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 Dan, how about you, man? Dan, you got one for us? Uh, you know, what I like to do is I like to play a game called Just Stay Home Instead. Whether it's go out to eat or go see a movie or go to a concert, I'll try to, to come up with an excuse to, to not go out and spend money. Uh, so yeah, much more, YouTube more to watch. 
Right, I got too much YouTube and chill uh, going on. Uh, no, I'll do things like I'll bring booze to the bar if I'm going out with friends and I'll pregame it. And so I'm spending less in the bar or I'll, uh, I'll like make my own seltzers at home instead of buying White Claw. I'll buy some like cheap Walmart, like a one, one liter, 70 cents, and then I'll put some vodka in it. Same exact thing, only, you know, I'm not paying 20 bucks. Hey, you know bucks. what you could do, Dan? If you're going to bring booze to the bar, why don't you really go bring like a whole fifth and then you can sell to the bar patrons and undercut the That's bar that you're at. Brilliant. So then you'll actually, you could make some money. It's like selling sodas at school. <laughs> Hang out by the restrooms in the back. <laughs> Kyle, uh, bring it home, my friend. All right, I'll try and give you a real one. <laughs> <laughs> I do those things, Kyle, come on. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, when was the last time any of you guys uh, looked at the, the insurances that you're paying, like whether it be homeowners or car insurance or, or any of those? I just recently redid my house payment one, or my house mortgage, and I cannot believe how much money I was able to save just by shopping around on that. Uh, it didn't take much time. They try to upsell you on a lot of things when you first buy your house. So I found out I was actually insured for about 200000 more than I actually needed. Just spend a little bit of time with the insurances that you do have. You can find some good rates out there if you spend a little bit. Do it once a year. Hey, Kyle, the corollary to that, and this is true, is just switch insurance companies like every two or three years. Because if you stay with the same one, I found this through experience, they screw you. Yeah. And just by your shopping, you I guarantee you, if you switch insurance companies every three, three years, you're going to get a better deal. I think that puts a great pin on it. Guys, uh, let's talk about what's happening where you all uh, work. Uh, Mr. Penzo, why don't you kick us off? What's going on at LenPenzo.com, man? Well, uh, what what the honeybee's going to miss, and she unsubscribed from my <laughs> blog recently, uh, and this has just come out, it's what influences our spending habits? Is it environment or biology? And we look into that, and we, and we go over some what actually is – what is the driving force? Maybe it's both, but you're not going to know unless you come to lenpenzo.com. Oh, I like that. Paulette, what's going on in your world, my friend? I've been doing uh, lots of writing coaching through my Your Personal Editor program, which is great. It's 10 weeks and have some wonderful students lately who are, um, you know, they just bring in a thousand words a week. They read it out loud to me and then we chat about it and it's like so fun. So I've been loving that. And um, into my powerhouse writers group coaching. So those are my two main programs, and they've been chugging along. It's been great. Awesome. And that's at powerhousewriters.com? Uh, yes. Awesome. Kyle and Dan, I had so much fun on the Two Bulls podcast. I'm so glad you guys said yes to come over here and uh, party with us. This is the only thing we had going on. <laughs> we yeah. cleared our schedule for this. Well, Dan, I'm sure Dan was like, well, I was going to stay home, but I, yeah. but I decided, yeah. Like a Friday night in seventh grade. That's right. I tried to get Dan over to the studio, but he said he plays this game where he tries to stay home instead. And I guess he just decided to record yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> when home is in your hot tub, Kyle, you know, <laughs> yes. it's, it's pretty easy. But what's going on at the Two Bulls podcast? I can't go out tonight. I need to unscrew the bulb on my oven. <laughs> it's going to take me a while. I was going to ask, yeah, how many, <laughs> you're talking about the LED savings, how many ovens with that power? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyle, what's going on at the Two Bulls podcast? We are actually about to start a new mini series. We just finished one with the Orderflow Labs, diving into trying to learn how to trade futures from the experts. Uh, we're about to start a new one that should come out at the beginning of October that will feature a psychologist, one of our old friends, Rich Friesen, and, and that will be looking at the trading psychology. So if you're interested in trying to learn more about making better decisions when it comes to your your uh, market, it, uh, God damn it. Can I do the three, two, one trick that you do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> three, two, yes. one. <laughs> yes. but, but, but we're not going to edit yours out. We'll just edit mine out. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't either. <laughs> so if you're looking True. to make better decisions when it comes to, to the money that you're putting into the markets, so give that a listen. Rich Friesen has been amazing. And I'm sure there's going to be some great exercises to follow along with when that does air. Mm -hmm. It is so fun. And you're also going to laugh a lot with these two guys, everybody. It is, It was such a good time. We had a ton of fun. I have fun listening to your show when I'm out on my run or my walk lately. My foot's all messed up. But it's so fun listening to you guys uh, and your guests. You. Just a, a great Thank time. You. you guys also have a disclaimer <laughs> that sounds 
very much like our disclaimer. Like, where did you guys come up with? Did you guys say two dorks? Do you guys say, don't listen to these dorks? Uh, I think it was two idiots on a podcast put out by a company called yeah. Financial Ineptitude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't listen to us. We're more of a cautionary tale. You can think of us like the tool time of investing. It is, it is so funny. When I heard yours, I'm like, it's so close to ours. It was very funny. Oh, it was definitely inspired by South Park. I could tell you that for sure. Uh, ours was inspired by Doug. No. <laughs> that was, that was a, which is more the same. All right. That's going to do it for today, everybody. Doug, you got it from here, man. What should we have learned today? Well, Joe, first, setting up your finances doesn't have to be a long and complicated process. You can break it down to the amount of time it takes to drink a six pack. What is, is that just me? Second, having a hard time making sure you earmark funds to meet savings goals? Just say bucket. Seriously, I mean, who knew buckets weren't just for sitting next to your drunk uncle who passed out on the sofa anymore? But the big lesson? Okay, turns out a bull in a china shop is not a good thing. It's not good. I thought it ought to be cool, but turns out it just makes this crazy mess. Thanks to Kyle Hedman and Dan Leeson for joining us today. Their podcast, Two Bulls in a China Shop, is available wherever you're listening to us today. We'll also include links in our show notes at stackingbenjamins.com. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us today. You can find Len at lenpenzo.com forward slash cement boots. Thanks also to Paulette Perhatch for joining us. Know when you're going to find out your writing has cost you money after you lose the bid, the job, or the respect of your coworkers. To prevent that from happening, join Paulette's Powerhouse Writers Coaching Program. Find out more at powerhousewriters.com. This show is the property of SP Podcast LLC, copyright 2022, and is written in part by the aforementioned Paulette Perhatch, with help from Jordan Grummet, a.k.a. Doc G, Joe Salcihai, and me. Thanks also to our team who made today possible. Brooke Miller juggles the production of this show, handles the show notes, and creates our amazing newsletter, The 201. Tina Eichenberg handles the video version of this show over on YouTube, and Gertrude Smith and Autumn Seahy are our social media mavens. Yay! All right, uh, mm. after show. I, I don't. Wait a minute. Oh, you're not done. You got more. Yeah. Oh yeah, the you whole do thing got more. We were just talking about. <laughs> we do. <laughs> the thing that they stole from us that they're claiming they got from somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> Oh, I don't, I mean, you know, it might oh, the be, thing we're, it might be similar. That's right. I forgot the thing we're suing them the over. Disclaimer yeah, that's right. Our lawyer said they owe us money. No, for I it. knew it. I knew we were going to get served. <laughs> okay, here we go. Three, no, two, one. I'm just bringing an Uno reverse card to that okay, courtroom. You go. It's your turn to talk. You go ahead. <laughs> I think you should have Kyle read the disclaimer. Just trying to. Take my lunch money away from me, aren't you, Len? <laughs> I drink your milkshake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm reading it now. I don't care what I read. <laughs> Here we go. I've never felt more emasculated. Not only should you not take advice from these meatloafs, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor. There, I'm done. Talk away. Welcome to the after show. You know, Kyle, when you were talking about your hot tub, I was thinking that each of us probably has one thing like the hot tub around our house that you know you're like, oh yeah, 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 I gotta get on that thing. What is the broken thing at your house that should have probably been fixed a long time ago, but has not been? Len, how about you? 
You know, that this is funny because I just fixed this thing that has been broken for two years at my house, and I fixed it yesterday only because I accidentally stumbled upon this video of two older women, uh, very nice ladies, that showed you how to unstick a stuck window. I uh, We have a bathroom that window. Was that was not the video he was <laughs> looking for. <but> <laughs> Two women get unstuck. <laughs> <laughs> and that's retired life. Yeah, I won't, I won't reveal the Google search term for how I came upon it. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I did this yesterday. So and, and I don't know why I didn't think of this myself, but it, it involved – hey, and seriously, it involved a, uh, a can of WD-40 and a pizza cutter. So take that. Which is also in the other video he was looking for. <laughs> yeah, that's for opening up the window. Oh, okay. It worked. What's the pizza cutter for? <laughs> is it pushing the... I You'll don't... find out. We'll talk okay. after the after show. We'll talk after... That's no, you just go, you go around the... Uh, yeah. it, 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 <laughs> you go around the uh, perimeter of where the window in, sits in the frame. It actually... You know, it, it helps, uh, and it did. It, it unstuck part of it. That was part of the oh, problem. So it wasn't a prank just to get you out there with a the pizza cutter trying to cut your window out? <laughs> <laughs> it would not have been funny, no, but it worked. Your your daughter out there with the YouTube yeah. channel, you know, like getting getting footage for TikTok. Paulette, you, you haven't lived at your house long enough, I just realized, to have one of these nagging things yet. I just dragged lots of little to-dos. I have this, like, to-do huge bin, and it's like... Necklace, I make jewelry, so it's like necklaces that are half made for my friends, things I have to fix or I mean it's just it was it's just a collection of stress. Wait a minute. There's a big one that you've been meaning to fix. We just talked about it like an hour ago. Right behind your left shoulder. Oh, I want to cover this. Yeah, that's like your house project that you've been putting off. I mean, that's my like aesthetic. You know, that there's a intake grate behind me. That's true. But you guys made fun of me for even caring today. So I thought I had just dropped it, but now you're just making me pick it up again. Just take the grate off and put like a clown face behind there. I will not. Freak everybody out the next (laughs) time we're on camera. See who notices. Sounds awful. Okay. They're going to notice a clown face. Or the next time somebody comes over, just say, hey, I think there's something in in there. And then have them look in there and there's a clown face. (laughs) Yeah. Not good. Kyle, you've got the hot tub, but is there uh, another one? Uh, yeah, there's a few. My knee is one. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. I mean, it doesn't hurt that That's bad. a bad one. <laughs> it's only yeah. when I go upstairs. I mean, it's only a four-story. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. what else. There's a bubble in the carpet I need to try to knock out that's been there for a while. My wife has mm. been painting the house, and one of the rooms has super high ceilings, so we don't have a ladder that gets that high. That's only been that way for about three years. You know, there's a, there's a few. Bubble in the carpet. There was a European, you know, one of those um, uh, old commercials uh, shows where they show like funny old commercials. And this was not PC at all. And this commercial was made and never ran that uh, the carpenters just get done carpeting this room and there's a big bubble and they're trying to get the bubble out. So they're all like stepping on it really hard and they're jumping on it and then they're taking stuff and putting it on it. And then the woman who owns the house like comes out and she's like, where's my cat? Oh, <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> and it's absolutely horrible. You I think it's hilarious. So, oh, it's so no bad. No cats were injured. <laughs> it is, yeah. Well, well, that is true. That is true. No cats actually injured in that joke or in that commercial. Uh, Dan, how about you? Uh, well, I live kind of almost, I guess a compound would be the right word. My my shower is not in the bathroom. It's its own small room. <laughs> and <laughs> when I went on vacation, I came back and there had been an electrician that installed some new lights and now there's no electricity in there. So I don't have a light in there. And I've just been using the flashlight on my phone and I've been way too lazy to like actually figure out why the light isn't coming on anymore and there's no electricity to that room. True story. I just want a reality show of Dan just walking around living life. When, when Dan said he was living in a compound, I thought he was going to say it's a community shower. It's a big old, you know. Well, you know. And my room has bars on it. And 
<laughs> yeah, but that's to keep the other people out, not me in. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. The podcast is part of his early release program. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Look, I got busted selling weed to some astronauts. It, it's a thing. <laughs> Apparently, space law is different than Earth Outside law. Outside of bar. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Uh, Doug, you got any of those? Or uh, since you retired, you've got it all taken well, care of. Well, it's funny you say that, Joe, because I was glad that you. I'm sitting here racking my brain like I'm kind of on top of stuff. I've taken care of an awful lot of stuff, and this place is in pretty good shape. And then I remembered I have a whole other house that in order to get away from doing all the maintenance, I just moved away from and left it sitting there. <laughs> Smart. There's so much <laughs> at that house Clever. that needs to get taken care of. And I'm like, no, 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 I can't see it. I can't hear it. Doesn't exist. That's why he stays uh, northern Michigan, so he doesn't have to he doesn't have to see it. That's how I used to end relationships. I was not good at breaking up, so I just move. Move away. Yeah. Oh my god. Highly recommend. <laughs> Highly yes. recommend. <laughs> that, that not... Wow. This is this is a great dating show between the Bumble Tinder and the Hulu and chill. Yeah. All right, guys. 